a walkthrough of a project finance model that was built with the application of our financial modeling standard uh, FAST. And it is the same whenever you build your model, our model must have a very clean and clear description such that anyone can pick the model and be able to update the model. Uh, on this part where we have the model guide, you can see that we have different cell styles that we've created. Input cells, which means any cell that you see that has been formatted like this, it's telling you that uh, these are hard-coded values, they can be changed. They are more like the model key drivers. So the second one, formulas, the result of one or two formulas being put together. Then the third one, which you see in that red, means they are linked from another worksheet. So you can also see the short description of what they have, uh, right? Uh, any cell that, that contain a drop-down option, this is how it will look like. So you have that here. And also, we have our table of contents. You can always navigate from here to any part of the model. So let's assume I want to go to my annual financials. I'll just click on it to bring me straight to my annual financials. And if I want to go back to the menu, to that table of contents, you'll see this menu icon up here. So all I need to do is to click on this menu icon and it'll take me back there. Here we have our model summary. And this is very, very uh, important aspect of the model build, right? The model should be able to communicate uh, what the project is all about at the start. So here we have our model audit check to be sure yes, your balance sheet is okay, your income statements, uh, you're definitely going to be um, at positive throughout the project's life, uh, right? So in case maybe over the project's lifespan, uh, the business will be at losses, then it is going to show you red. So you have your cash flow to be sure that yes, you have enough cash at the end of the period, your funding equal to your use of fund and uh, based on what you've done in the model, can the project debt be fully repaid? And then we check the project NPV to be sure if it is positive. Then the metrics and the threshold. So this is more like the threshold, the benchmark uh, that the lender would request for, depends on the project. Then this uh, model output. And you can see currently um, uh, these projects uh, really cannot meet the minimum uh, DSRA threshold required, but the average is fine. The minimum ICR and the PLCR is okay. Then other ratios as well. So you can see everything uh, from the dashboard and you can see the project evaluation, the NPV, project IRR, equity IRR, break-even period and break-even uh, sales as well. So the stock accredited drivers of the operations, uh, stock capacity, the price per energy, revenues, variable costs per um, megawatts, right? MH megawatts per hour, the same thing OPEX. So you have also have your timing so that you can see everything from the summary dashboard, your debt profile is in IBO rates. The, so the, we built two, tranch of, uh, two tranches of debt financing into the model. And here you have your summarized use of funds and your total sources of funds, right? Which we have here. Then you have your debt sizing. So we have built the debt size, debt size into the model to be sure that, hey, uh, are we sure the project is not taking more than uh, what's it can take. And here you also have a scenario switch here. So you have like 10 different cases, which once you click on it, it will change the uh, narration to what that scenario is in. And here we're also building some macro. So because of circularity uh, and iteration, so we just use uh, macro. So that once you click this macro, it's just go ahead, do the copy and paste, and then show you that yes everything is okay so in case this one is not showing okay so let's assume i change this to case five so look at what happened so that means it's going to tell me what's that case what's what we have there so let me try and open so it's saying five percent decrease in revenue and 15 percent increase in cost so which means i need to rerun the model all i need to do is to click on this rerun so once i click it it will go ahead and recalculate the model itself so let me see if i can undo and if it's we go back, let's okay. Let me just put it back to our case one. Let's put it back at case one. So you can see it goes back straight to okay. And here we have our project operation. So expected inflow, our total flow, our net cash, our cash available for debt service, our principal repayments, the repayment profile, interest expense, debt service, our uh, DSRA, debt service reserve accounts, and our debt service coverage ratio as well so straight to the scenario this is where we have the scenario built 
that is more like a dynamic uh, scenario of a thing. So you have your capacity, which you can say what if the capacity is below this and you give description of the case that you want to check, right? Everything being equal, we are saying if there's 10% increase in revenue, so which means that will become 110, right? 10% increase in costs, every other thing being equal, just come here and say 10%, that will become 110%. Uh, operating cost 110. I think a 20 percent increase in our capex, every other thing being equal, they can see the capex increase significantly. So, we just created that mega scenario here. And from the input, which is more like the main uh, model driver, right? And you can always update that based on this model self style guide. So, financial period uh, that's when they are trying to get the documentation, uh, look for funds, right? So, during that uh, period. Model just are just three months. You can always update that. Your construction period, so immediately the financial close, you get started with the project, then it states how long it takes. So you stay that in months in case there will be any delay. And so we created a scenario around it. Any format you see, which means you need to go to the scenario worksheet to put that data. Yeah. So you have a delay period where you say, oh, we're going to construct this project for a period of uh a 12 months, but because of one or two things, which will maybe to be delayed, and you know, uh, the, the longer the construction period, right, or the more it's being delayed, that is definitely going to affect our uh, operations. Because you are saying, hey, in year in year one, so maybe we are, we are here in year zero, and you're saying the next six years, this will be my uh, cost, this will be my revenue. Now, the, the inflation effects in year six and in year seven, they are different. So, which means if the construction period is delayed, is delay that means uh, the inflation effects will be uh, will be will be higher on the projected cash. So here and we have the operation ten years and other general assumptions here as needed in the model. So we consider effects of macroeconomic assumptions in determining the uh, incremental factor. So here we have the Nigeria inflation rate, USA inflation rate, just to um, factor that in what the effect will be uh, on the exchange rates, uh, which is the purchasing power parity was also considered in the model. In Jira CPI, uh, increments in our pricing, neighbor rates and deposit rates and also our overdraft rates. So the, this is more like the spot rates that was used in the model. As you can see, this formatted. If you see it in this format, that means uh, we created a scenario around it. So you can decide to put your own different scenario we think we want to apply what if we are using a, a a parallel market rate as compared to official rates you can always make that uh updates and here is our is our capex our capex profile right so uh for the uh, megawatts in case uh, over the period they might want to add additional megawatts they can always just they can always put the size Right, the, the project can be uh can be can have a good cash stand such that it can always uh reinvest in itself. So maybe they want to add megawatts, some other megawatts, and if you are not raising new fund, the SPV can still fund itself to increase that. So they can always put that and also state the year, state the uh the period, and the period should always be a start month. Right. Then this is our cost outlay. We are saying uh, facility, cost of building, the panel, and the whole thing. So here, you just put the total amount. You put the total amount here under the total input. Then you come below it where you see this cost profile. So yes, you are saying you are going to get the 40 uh, billion. And so the way it works is this. Uh, the, usually, you need to draw down. So it's not as if they will give you all the cash at once. Though, yes, we have a scenario where they give you uh, upfront total inflow or they make it a prorata so as you need it that's when you'll be able to draw it so they will create one account for you that you can always draw down on you definitely know what you want to give it close to 40 billion and just leave it in your hand without monitoring so they always put it in one reserve account and that's where you always draw it from as you need it it's not as if they are going to give you and it becomes your own fund so you need to state uh the cost profile so maybe oh, for our facility and the panel oh, you're going to spend everything within at least August. So between this 1st of April to the following date. So this was just set as a quarterly 
So this quarterly, then we just added two two months to it. So you can always put the date that you expect that cost to be incurred. So hundred percent will be incurred during this period. So for example, our freight, our system and inverter, we are saying oh, there's no cost coming in in that first maybe first quarter. Then the second quarter, oh, we're going to spend thirty percent on it, twenty percent of the total budget cost, right? Twenty percent, twenty percent, and twenty five percent. So everything was always total hundred percent, which is the audit check that we have here. So just put the total here, state your cost profile, how you plan to spend it, then it, this will automatically calculate on its own. Also, case uh, the, 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 there's provision for um, maintainable or replacement costs. So maybe over the period of the project, they, they want to consider some maintainable and replacement costs, they can just put the value here and also state the dates up here. So in doing that, uh, remember, as I said, uh, during the financial, uh, before the financial close, uh, there the, the are different, uh, there are different uh, professionals, right, that are always uh, involved. This is a professional or consultant, right? So your financial advisor, the legal guys, the insurance, the facility agent, the trustee, you can even have your model auditors and, and those kind of costs. So it must also be stated when you are doing your project finance because it forms part of your total fund. So here, this is what we have. We just come here. So there are some costs that maybe the project will always need to keep paying. So for this one, they are saying technical cousin tax we always be you'll be paying them every year. So every year you must pay them 20 uh, million, 20 million. Same thing to the facility agents. So there are some that might just be maybe you just pay them uh, at the start of the projects and that's all. So all this legal fee, insurance fee, uh, you need to pay them. And they are just they are immediately the project is starting, immediately the construction is starting. After the financial close, you have the cash because all these costs will form part of your total fund that you need for the projects. Then you disburse it immediately, you uh, access it. So you must also consider that. So we factor in depreciation, amortization, and capital allowance into the model. So part of our... Uh, use of funds, we have three line item that uh, be uh, uh, capitalized. So you can see, we expect it to be, so facility 20 years, freight 10 years, racking 10 years, uh, which was now converted into months, multiply that by 12 months. We have a depreciation rate, which was now converted to uh, our depreciation rate. We have the initial capital allowance, annual capital allowance, uh, your max capital allowance. So you also need to consider tax Right, so you see the tax life and the expected tax month. So for our typical accounting tax, we make provision for our company income tax and plus education tax. Maximum capital allowance included, we have the pioneer period. So there are some projects like that, that they give you a pioneer period uh, so that the, the business can actually, uh, the project can grow and have sufficient cash, right? And most time infrastructure model kind of uh, help to develop the the, the the community so tax option you can always select your tax op your tax option as well so if you think of capital allowance we should cap we should calculate our model using capital allowance approach or we should just use a flat rate so you can just select that option and that will affect the calculation so on the part of the financing we're saying hey debt will be 70 percent and equity 30 percent so if you go to our scenario you can see that we created different scenario where you can always update that if you think maybe equity debt should be more, debt should be less. You just do that update. Then the other will go for equity. Then for our equity, so our equity type, you have you can have a pro rata draw. So as you need it, so oh, we need 20% this period, we need 10%, we need 15%. So that's how they're going to release the fund or the upfront where they just give you the whole thing at once. It becomes your own. So that you can always select that option. Then order rates just to consider our cost of uh, equity. Or, so you, can, you could use our due rate, which, which means we are saying the, the minimum expected return that we can expect from this project, at least at worst case scenario. Then for the debts, we factor in two facilities of debt option. So tranche A and tranche B. Typical projects for now, so you can have three, you can have four, you can have five, right? So debt splits, we are saying, hey, yeah, 70% will go for debts. Now, this 70% will now be financed by 60% of tranche A and 40% of tranche B. Then you also have your loan period. So um, it depends, could be seven years, could be 10 years, 
as well. Then grace period, they've given a one year, uh, which means uh, the loan period itself has considered the grace period. So I think we have two approaches to that. So is that I'm saying, hey, I'm taking this loan for seven years, then grant me, let's say, grant me a moratorium or grace period of a year. So that means I'm saying, hey, year one, I won't pay the principal repayments and also need to agree if the interest would be capitalized or not. So that means you're going to repay it over six years. And there's the second option where you're saying, hey, seven years repayments plus one year moratorium grace period. So that means that's more like equivalent uh, to eight years. But most times what the lenders usually agree with is your loan period will be inclusive of your moratorium period. So that's the same thing we have here. So we are saying loan period will be for six years and they're giving us grace period. That means the repayment period will be over five years. So the same thing for the transgibility, the payments in months, then the first drawdown, when you need the first uh, the debt to come in. So you need to state the date. So maybe tranche A will be, maybe tranche A we, we fund the phase one of the, this set of funding that we need and tranche B will now come in. So those are the kind of things that you can also state in the model. So just this one, I've just did. So if the interest will be capitalized, so it means if interest is being capitalized, that means you are not paying both the principal and you are not paying both the interest. But if interest is being capitalized, that means, uh, 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 so if interest is, okay, if interest is capitalized, <laughs> don't mind me. So the first one, if interest is capitalized, that means during the construction period, when they start disbursing the loan, you will not pay the principal and you will not pay the repayment. So all the interest during that period will be calculated and be added to the initial debt amount. Right, that means you are saying yes, interest will be capitalized. But if interest is not capitalized, that means, uh, and you have a grace period, you have a moratorium period, that means you are not going to be paying your principal, but you will be paying your interest. Now, if that is the case, that you'll be paying your interest, that means someone, a lender, must guarantee that payment because the project has not started making revenue. Right, so when you are doing the model, if the interest will not be capitalized, that means you will need to. All the interest expense that will be paid during that period will be added to the total amount of funds that you need for the project. And that's how we and that's how it works in project finance. Then you state different rates. So you can have different fees, so participation fee, commitments, management, uh, the arrangement, those are kind of uh, the thing that uh, uh, lenders also enjoy, and they are, that makes them willing to give you as much as much cash. A participation fee, uh, and they also need to state that maybe participation fee will be on the total amount of debts they are giving you or percent of the outstanding uh, balance. So you just need to determine that. And is this something you'll be paying continuously or just paid for the first period or you'll be paying it periodically? So those are the kind of things that you need to uh, understand. Then your threshold, minimum DSR, average debt service coverage ratio, the max, the minimum interest coverage ratio, and your project lifetime coverage ratio. Then for the DSR accounts, uh, definitely you need to be fill your DSR account. So what debt service reserve account is saying is uh, the, the, the lenders want to be sure that yes, you can meet up the your debt service obligation. So it means if you are paying 5 million in the next month. So if let's assume the payment is done quarterly or monthly. So it means if I need to pay 5 million next month, right? So they will create one account they call debt service reserve account. That means that account, you do, before that period, you must have deposits the uh, equivalent of that your next uh, debt obligation. You must have deposited it inside it. So that's it's more like a reserve account. You can also have your maintainers, a reserve account, stamp duty reserve account. So all those kind of accounts you can also have them. Then on the part of the debt sculpting. So for the debt if you see that under this repayment option, we also have three types of repayment option. So you can have equal principal uh, repayment. You can have a fixed annuity. So equal rep principal repayment is to just divide the total loan right by the period. For the fixed annuity, we are using our uh, PMT formula in Excel. For the sculpted, the sculpted, uh, we usually use the sculpted a lot, and it is just to uh, help manage the project cash. We are saying, hey, even in this period, the project we have more cash, then they should just 
pay more of their debt during that period. So the period where we see that, hey, they might have lesser cash, we also reduce the repayment. But at the end, uh, everything will still be fully repaid based on the period uh, stated. So if, if this period, if I have 100, 100, if you have, uh, if I have 100 million, right, as excess cash, definitely I can pay more during that period. But if I have a period where my cash is just 20 million, definitely that period, I will need to just pay lesser and bring in more repayments during the period that I have excess cash. And that is what that sculpted repayment is saying. So you can see, you put your sculpted repayments. So this was just built monthly. I can always state that, but at the end of the period, everything was always equal to 100. So maybe I think, hey, maybe this period, they might have a, uh, maybe they have one each capital, uh, they have one each expenses that they need to do during that period. And I'm saying, oh, maybe even this period, they might not even pay, maybe they should not even pay any amount, right? And we already have a formula here that makes sure that everything is always sum up to 100. So you can always determine how you make that repayment. So on the part of the operations, just the uh, project capacity, the generation, just our typical uh, solar energy uh, thing. And they'll be using gas. So you have that. You have your tariff, a megawatt per hour, your energy price, your gas price as well then on the part of the costs just put a monthly expected cost and provision for your operating working capital so here we have our timing this is where we have done all the magic of what drives the model so uh based on our financial modeling standard when you are building your model make sure you simplify everything and in doing that uh timing is one very important thing that we help you instead of you building lots of if function if 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 you can just simplify everything and you look at the formula just simple 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 formula and you can also i will use a lot of naming range as well right so you can see just everything simple sim everything well simplified so everything here just drive the uh, changes in the period and here we have the operation uh, where we've done our calculation with the effect of our macro uh, macroeconomic assumption effects changes we calculated them to be in uh, in index formats right and forecast that for the period and also the exchange rate using our purchasing power parity uh, approach so what that does is just kind of keep the exchange rates uh, at a uh, at, at a very uh, good uh, rates, right? Not like year one, year one, you are saying the rates will be 439. Then in video 10, you are seeing something like the exchange rate would have gone high to 3,000 or 5,000. That, that's because the effect is it's going to affect the cash. That means you'll be over projecting your cash. But this using a purchasing power parity approach just kind of stay, make it the uh, growth realistic. Right, because you are comparing the effects of one company and the other company to, to each other. And here we have the revenue where we did the calculations, everything well, well simplified. Simple, simple formula that you can understand, right? As well, so we have the operations of the working capital. So during the period where the business is not making revenue, where they are still doing construction, definitely you don't expect to have revenue during that period. But once operation starts, so if you look up here, if you go to our timing. You can see that those are the things that we were able to create from here. You say, hey, this is the financing period. So financing, when they are trying to get the funds, right? The next thing, then they start the construction. You can also see the dates. You can see the period stack, and you can see when the operation starts. So here we have the financing. This is where we did the funding calculation. Um, everything well simplified. So you can see the total use of funds. So this is the fund required. Right, and how they plan to draw the funds and how it will be funded, and also the equity. Then the list of the project costs. Just say most of this also depends on uh, the the project itself. So interest during construction. So you can see that being added during that construction period, everything will be added to the total funds that has been needed. Your reserve that also need to be funded during that period must also include it. I also need to check hey, my total funding. Is it the same thing with the total uh, fund that I've calculated? So you have your equity, you have your return earnings, then you have your debt, uh, which was built. So different categorization. You have your work, you have your repayment schedule uh, built into the model that you can take a look at 
and see how we've done the calculation. So all these parts just financing. Then here is where we have all our capex. This is where we have our depreciation, our capital allowance. So we computed everything, right? Factoring the loss relief, uh, the normal or typical capital allowance. So you can see it's the capex, the depreciation, the assets. So it's very, very uh, flexible. And we also use a waterfall approach in building the schedule. So calculate your initial allowance. So this is the depreciation. So this part is just for depreciation, waterfall, depreciation. And then this part is where we have our capital allowance. So we have capital allowance. We also use the waterfall approach in building this. And here we have your monthly, monthly outputs. So these are monthly income statements. Our monthly income statement, your income statement balance sheets, cash flow. Then we have our reserve account. So your cash account, your overdraft account. So you can see. So during that construction period, you see that you always have there's nothing happening because the total fund you are getting is equal to what you are spending. So then cash flow available for debt service, you do your debt sizing. So debt sizing also depends on the project cash. Right? The project cash flow available for debt service, we do the debt sizing. Uh, you have your debt service, your repayments, then you calculate your debt service coverage ratio, your minimum interest, then the project cash flow, which was used for the uh, end in getting the NPV, our internal rate of return, our break even. Uh, in sales and the break even uh, period, and also the debts service reserve accounts. And we have a water flow, uh, water, uh, our cash flow waterfall that was built into the major the ratios, and also the equity. Uh, so that monthly was consolidated to the quarterly uh, model. And then we have it in our annual, in our annual model that we have in this. So you can see everything being consolidated to the yearly period then you have your control this is more like the control house where the macro is doing his work right and also the necessary model audit that was built into the model so if i go to my summary uh, which is more like the main uh, summarized page and i click on let's say say scenario five so if i click on scenario five let me click on case so if i select case five so what happened is this okay uh, let me redo that so what happened is this. So case five, what do we have? Uh, let me try and expand this. Let me try and expand this very well. So that we can 5% decrease in revenue and what? So I think this is supposed to enter very well so that we can see it. So let's see. So we're saying 5% increase in revenue and 15% increase in costs. Now, what we happen is this. Uh, the, the, now, looking at this, just one thing has happened. It's telling us that with this effect, so let me adjust this. Uh, let me see what's happening. So, mm -hmm. show everything now. So let me see so that we can see it very okay. So five percent increase in decrease in revenue and fifteen percent increase in costs. We can see definitely we are not going to be able to meet up our uh, minimum DSR or DSR ratio. You can see everything just turned to red. Our NPV becomes negative. So let me change it back to so maybe case two. What do we have in case two? 10% increase in revenue. So everything looks good. So case three is saying what? 10% increase in cost. Every other thing being equal. And you can see the effect. Now it's going to tell me I should rerun the model because the macro needs to work. So uh, let's let's even look at another one. Case five. So 20% uh, increase in capex. Now, if you look at this 20% increase in capex, you can see that my total fund is not equal to my my total use of fund is not equal to my total fund. So which means I will need to click on this raw macro. And Excel will go in, do the copy and pasting. So it's more like a circularity. Because one line item depends on another. I click run again. It's asking me to run it again. So uh, most times, uh, you know, due to rounding error, it could be 0, 0.0 something, something uh, that's really affecting it. Everything looks good. But the way we've created the model, we want to be sure that, yes, even if it's 0.00000005, we want the model to continue to run it and give us the uh, appropriate thing. So you can see now, it's give us back OK. And if you come here, you can see our total user font is equal to our, what? our total font. And here, it's telling us that, hey, the model, 
the projects cannot take this. And also you can see that it's telling us that the debt that we plan to raise is way higher than our debt size. So let me put it back to case one. So I put it back to case one. I will need to run the model again. So that's 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 just project for now. So what this does, this, I prefer using this macro as compared to uh, using our uh, iteration, our circular reference, uh, because that might really uh, slow down the model. Because this project finance is such a big model, you have some uh, interesting formulas that you build into the model. So you need to you also know how to efficiently make use of Excel. So all you need to do for this template is just update the inputs and every other thing will work perfectly. So let me run the macro. Let me run the macro until it's so you just click on this one. So it give us back to our, okay, where we started from. So this is how to make use of this model. Well simplified and easy to understand.